passenger side, just obviously driver side has got some extra length. Uh, we happen to have a passenger side one here that needs a rebuild, so that's what we're going to use. Alright, so if you've got a quarter segment grinder or even a corded one, as long as it's got a cutting disc, great, use that. If you don't have one, with a hacksaw, even one of the little junior baby ones will do. We've just got to cut a metal band with it. Um, if you've got some, these are just nail, pin, nail pincers or nail pullers. If you've got some long handle ones, great. We've just welded extra length on. We're a little pitch arm, so it makes life easier. Uh, sharp knife. A pair of circlet pliers. Now, there's two types of circlet pliers. You want the pair that when you squeeze them together, they open rather than close. Um, CV boot pliers. You don't have to have these if you don't have these. Find yourself some side cutters that are blunt. We don't actually want to cut with them, so we want them to be nice and blunt. It's to squish a band in. Copper and high hammer. Uh, a drift, or I'm using a thick chisel that I've deliberately ground the end off so it's completely blunt. We're literally just using it for drifting. And then I personally use a real wide socket, so it's a 32 mil socket. It's just going to help tax on the bearing. You're going to need some brake cleaner. You can buy it in an aerosol can, and you're going to need a lot of rags. Um, being clean is a key thing to this. It's quite a messy job, but you've got to basically keep it all clean. And we'll run through Okay, it. so first things first, the reason why you get vibrations in your aftermarket shafts and you don't with the genuine Ford shafts is due to their design. So you've got two main types of CV design. You've got a ball type and you've got your tripod. Now the outer joint is a ball type and there's pretty much no in and out movement. The inner joint is a tripod and there's that much in and out movement. So that movement's important because if you lower the car, it's going to come in closer and your articulation. So with your aftermarket cheap drive shafts, they tend to be a ball type inner and outer joint because they're cheaper to produce. What happens though is they get bound up on the articulation and that's where you get the vibration. So previously the only solution was to buy a complete shaft because Ford don't sell you the bits to do this, neither do Volvo. Whereas now you can buy them from aftermarket suppliers. If you can change a CV boot, you can rebuild this thing. Um, first things first that we're going to do, this is a solid metal band, it is very thick, it is very heavy duty, they are press fit, once they're on, they're on. We've got to cut this, so if you've got an angle grinder, unless you're just going to cut through it, if you don't have an angle grinder, you're literally just going to hold it and just gently saw through. Won't even take you long, I'm, I'm just going to cut this one with a hacksaw. There you go, done. Pull the band back, take the band off, chuck it in the bin. This boot is split, which is why this joint has failed, because no grease is left in it. So again, cut that one off. I'm just going to use the angle grind this time, it's a lot quicker. Don't use your fingers, it'll be a little bit hot. At this point now, we're just going to cut through it with a blade. But because we've cut all that out, you can see you've got all the aluminium dust. We don't want that going in the joint. We're going to clean it still, but we just want to wipe all that away. So grab a clean rag, wipe it all away. Cool, so just grab your blade. That's straight in the bit. Alright, so now you can kind of see you've got your tripod and you've got your joint. We need to separate these. Sometimes you can just violently pull this out and it will come apart. Other times you've got a little bit of pers persuasion. So if it comes out first time, just douche. If it doesn't come out first time, stick this bit in a vise and tap each corner one at a time and it will just pop off. Cool, so this is where our punch or very blunt chisel comes into play. You want to make sure you're not going to damage it. Flat edge, just give it a gentle tap. You just want to pop it off. 
See, it's coming out already. So as you can see, it's just still stuck on these two rollers. Just needs a little bit more. If you do are using a copper hammer, you can just tap it with the tide. There we go. Cool. That's our cup out. Now at this point, you want to use brake cleaner, clean all the grease off this so we can see it. Makes life a lot easier. And same with that, you want to clean all the grease out of that. Alright, so as you can see, you've just got the circlip there, you've got two little holes. There's a little recess each side, so as you spread it open, I find it's easy just to wedge a little flat blade in there just to help it up. Do wear safety glasses, these things can go flying and it will take out your eye. Cool, there you go, just came out nice and easy, didn't even have to use the flat blade. Okay, so we're back in the vise again. We're going to use that blunt chisel or drift. There's no circlip on it, so we just want to pull the wheel back, just so we're not going to damage it, even though we're replacing it, and you just want to gently tap it off. That's our old tripod, she's off. Now we want to clean any grease, because this is still a bit greasy. We want to get this baby completely spotless. Okay, so now the shaft's totally clean. You want to feel it just with the back of your arm, because you know there's no grease in your arm. Yep, it's completely grease free. Now it's really important that it's grease free, because if we end up with any grease between the lips of the boot and the shaft, doesn't matter how hard you clamp it, it's just going to completely grease that over time. That's why we only use genuine drive shaft boots, because of the bands. So this is the small band, and these measure up at being about 1.6 mil thick. If you buy a universal kit with one of these style bands, they're 0.36 of a mil thick. So that's more than double the thickness, and that's for a reason. These have to clamp super tight because the amount of grease that gets put into these shafts. This will never go that tight, they tend to snap, and so people either do them a little bit looser, which means the grease just pours out of them over time, or they don't use the clamp at all and they use a cable tie, which is even worse. If you're doing this job, don't even bother if you're going to use one of these or a non-genuine boot, you're literally just wasting your time. So you want to take your small one, pop it on. And basically we're just going to slide it all the way down the shaft. It will be a bit tight because obviously there's no grease whatsoever. If it folds inside out, don't stress. It's not a problem. That's the bump where it's going to sit, but we're going to push it all the way past there. Now we want to take our new bearing kit. Check everything feels smooth, it's not graunchy. It's definitely all good. Line it up in your splines and then you can push it down. Now, if you're struggling to push it down, that's what the big socket's for. You want it big enough so that the shaft can sit in the socket recess, just give it a tap down. You only need this to go as far down to get to the groove for your circlip. All the genuine boot kits come with a new circlip, so do use the new one. Check it's all the way in the recess. Perfect. Now we can put this to one side. Now our cup, same deal. This is where your mating face is. This is going to be completely spotless. So no grease at all, so just to ensure there isn't any. Even after you've wiped it, just hit it again with some more brake cleaner. 
and that will just make it, just let it air dry out. Let it dry for a minute. Okay, so now it's completely dry. All genuine CV wickets come with grease. So you just want to cut a little corner of it off. And pour all of it in. So squeeze it all in. Fill it all the way. Cool. Oh. There, I just dropped a bit there. So, we do not want to leave that grease there. So we're just going to have to clean it off. Remember, even just a tiny little bit is going to have bad effects. So you want it spotless. Cool. Now, with the clean rag, we take our shaft, push our bearing bits all the way in, and we'll line it up like this. Now, if you just smack that in, the grease is going to go and go everywhere. So what we tend to do is just wrap it around a little bit with the rag. So any grease that does flick out, the rag's going to stop it rather than it just covering the boot. You obviously want to make sure it's not going to get caught in. Holding it nice and straight, just give it a gentle snap. See a little bit of grease tried to shoot up, but the rag stopped it. So now you just want to work it all the way around. I like to just take my finger and just push this grease all the way down and in. And if there's any excess on the edges, just wipe it off again. Cool, so our shaft is in its most compressed state and that's its most outwards. Now as this rolls, it will just continue to lube it. So now at this point, remember there is our recess here, that's got to be completely clean of grease. So we just want to wipe it, same as before. And now we can start to slide this boot up. Now we want to line it up so that we've got the half moon going into the piece. And you feel it go all the way up to the ridge, like that. All right, so now we've got our band. The way that this is designed is it this clips in like that over it and then you squish it together and it will then sit over the hooks. So sometimes in transport these get bent down a little bit, you just want to make sure it's standing up so it gives it something easy to hook onto. Slide your band over, making sure that you're in between the two ridges here. And basically what we're going to do is we're going to use a pick or a flat blade just on that corner just to hoof it forward to get it over that first step. So this is probably the trickiest part about the whole job. It's getting it on without stabbing yourself in the hand. There you go. Cool, that one went on. So, it's clicked in. Just want to visually check that we're inside the ridges. Excellent. Now at this point, you're either going to use your blunt side cutters or your CV boot tool. All you need to do is squish this section and this section together and then it will clamp all the way over. So you squish it as far as it will go and then push down the tang. Cool, so that is locked in. It's not going to leak any grease. Now that's all that's left to do. This one's already pre-done. we just got to squish that. So again, using your blunt side cutters, you can squish that together. You've got to squish it real hard. 
make sure that you are in the ridge. There you go, so you can see the little ridge. You need to squish it in right there. I just use these nail pincers with like strong arms. Get it either side. Cool. That's your CV joint all done. Give it a good work around before you put it back in the car. Just helps make sure all the grease is in there. Clean this bit up. As you can see there's a little bit of dirt. That'll make a drive shaft oil seal leak, so just give it a good clean just with some wire wool or some really fine wet and dry. Um, if it's the passenger side, side, side shaft, then you're going to just change the spring clamp, or sorry, spring clip. If it's the driver's side, there isn't one, so you can just pop it straight back in. If you are doing the inner and outer boot, the process is exactly the same. You've got to strip the front half all out and then cut the band, same as before, and this boot slides off this way. Fill it full of grease, slide it back on, clamp it up exactly the same, then do your inner boot. So you can't replace your outer boot without also placing your inner boot, but you can replace the inner boot on its own because of how it comes on and off. The outer boots tend not to really split. The only time I really see them damaged is when someone's literally caught it while working on the car. They're a, a more of like a, a plasticky kind of hardcore, whereas this is just rubber. So the most common spot for these to perish is right here on the joint.